Okay, friends, this is a little different episode of the Spirit Field Leadership Podcast, so stay tuned. It's question time. All right, so welcome back to the Spirit Field Leadership Podcast. I'm Pete Burak. Miguel's behind the camera, and Chris is behind the light. I can't see him very well, but I asked him at the spur of the moment to come up with some questions uh, so that we could do a slightly different episode, a little bit more relaxed. We tried this before and it went all right, but we're going to keep building on it. Um, so I asked Chris, 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 excuse me, to come up with some questions because I like question and answer. And I figured this would be a way to maybe stimulate some of you to actually send us some questions because none of you ever respond to when I ask you to send questions. So, uh, yeah, do that. This is fun. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at. Chris, how are you doing? I'm good. Chris is on the mic, but behind the camera, so you can't see him. That's fun. Miguel is nodding appreciatively. Uh, you ready to go? I am. Cool. Fire away, man. Okay, so I once had a mentor who was telling me about a ministry leader who left professional ministry when he realized that what God was doing through him was exceeding what he was letting God do in him. Hmm. So my question is, how do you approach this balance of in versus through in your own leadership? Dang. Wow. I can't even imagine what kind of question you would have come up with if I had given him like lots of time. That was pretty deep after, you know, three minutes of prep time. That's pretty good. Um, the difference between in and through or how do you balance that? Hmm. <laughs> Here's here's a, here's an initial thought or a little story. I was in adoration the other day, and I had my notepad out, and I was ready for like business meeting with Jesus. You know, like I was ready to go. I was like, "What are my marching orders? What are our goals? What should I be thinking about? What should I be doing?" And I was just like, "Let's get some work done, Jesus. I'm here with you in adoration. It's time to go." And what I was relating to him as is like the best boss I've ever had. You know, and he is, he is truly the best boss and he's the Lord of my life. And I really love the way he leads me and I, I want to obey him, you know, but as I was about to have this business meeting with him, I felt like in my spirit, uh, the Lord was like, put your notebook away. Like, I don't want to be your boss right now. I want to just be your friend. I want to be your companion. I want to be kind of like the love of your life, not just like the Lord of your life in that moment. And that, and it's, I don't spend a lot of time making the distinction between those two because I think that's it's all rolled into the, the what it means to know him and to follow him is that beautiful harmony between obedience and abiding, becoming, doing, listening, all of that. Um, healing, being sent, all of it is like part of what it, it's all, I, I think of it more of like a holistic relationship that it is, but sometimes certain parts of relationships need to be emphasized in order to make sure that they're strong. And in that moment, the part of the relationship with him that needed to be emphasized was not what I could do for Jesus and not what, how I could best obey him externally, but more of just getting to know him internally and more deeply abiding with him and being like transformed by his love. And so, um, that was a great reminder. It was a great reminder. And I realized I had spent probably a couple weeks in a row of not of praying every day, but not necessarily like falling more deeply in love with him, just more just looking for what he wanted me to do and then asking for the strength to do it. And that wasn't like a bad thing, but it was something was out of balance. And he was gently reminding me to, to abide with him, not just do the things he asked me to do. So, um, I'd say like the balancing act of that is not something I spend a lot of time evaluating, but more along the lines of just trying to live in the power of the Holy Spirit and letting the Spirit guide that so that the balance that He desires for me is the balance that I have in my life and not an arbitrary, oh, I have to do this amount of this and then this amount of this or it letting letting the Spirit kind of guide that, that process. But there's no question that... Um, it's very easy, especially like spiritual leaders, people who are trying to live as spiritual leaders to fall into a certain trap of doing, 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 and being, um, thinking that's the extent of the relationship. And there's that really dramatic verse where Jesus is talking about people who cast out demons and healed people and do all these things in his name. 
but then at the end of their life, he's like, depart from me. I never knew you. That isn't a, a very like convicting passage to consider of, is it possible or where am I doing all these things in the name of, for the Lord, in the name of the Lord, but my heart is actually still far from him. That's something to meditate on and definitely something to bring to him and see what he has to say about it. Hmm. That's very interesting perspective. Uh, it actually <clears throat> segues into my second question I had for you. Sweet. Um, cause I've just been thinking about the old Testament quite a bit. Um, it's no, no surprise. Um, it's not news that it's full of a lot of failure. Hmm. Um, you know, we, we joke about the, the Israelites and how often they would be receiving grace from the Lord and tangible providence, and then would actually go the opposite direction and start outcrying against him and being like, why did you take us here? So there's a lot of failure in the Old Testament, but one thing that was really catching my attention is the leaders that would start out really well, Hmm. but they didn't finish the race well. And so as I was thinking about that, there's a couple examples would be like King Saul or King Solomon even. Mm -hmm. And, um, I guess my question is, why do you think that is? Why do you think there's this tendency, even for kings who were blessed by God, to end um, in such kind of a poor way? Yeah. 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 Why is that? I mean, I think <clears throat> a lot of it comes down to the the humanness of us, right? And the the capacity, the great capacity we have through the Lord to do tremendous good, but then the great capacity we have to ignore that grace, ignore that anointing and, and choose evil. Um, yeah, it is, it is pretty startling at times to consider the fact that like at any point, any of us could reject God and reject him consistently in no amount of like the potential is that even years and years of faithfulness could be cast off in even a few moments of unfaithfulness. It's it's very humbling and it's very, um, I think, properly convicting to consider like, yeah, I'm on the narrow path right now, but um, I'm very capable of jumping off the narrow path into the wide path. And I think somebody like David is a is a great example. He's used a lot to illustrate this, right, where he's. He's God's beloved. He's anointed. He's faithful. He accomplishes all these things for the Lord. And then in a series of a relatively short amount of time, basically darn near throws it all away. Um, and, and then the, but the story of David, I think is the, is why it's so convicting and so important is because yes, he throws it all away, but then he repents. And I think the thing that is most distressing and probably most tragic about like Saul or Solomon or some of these others. And we don't know like in the moment of their death or kind of like right up to the, the, whether or not there was a repentance. I mean, it sure doesn't seem like it based on the, the, the story of Saul and how he dies and all this. But like the point is David repents. He humbles himself before the Lord. Psalm 51 is, is, is written in this cry of the heart of a recognition of his own weakness, his own infidelity, his own need for forgiveness and mercy and his desire to be reconciled with God. And that is, a, a, should be a great source of hope for us as well. That yes, at, in those moments where we reject the Lord, where we sin, when we um, are unfaithful, he still is faithful. And he still is extending a hand of mercy all the all the way to the end, and uh, his mercy is endless for those who want it and re- receive it and ask for it. And so, um, I think there's that again that balance of being able to uh, learn from and be convicted by these characters in the Bible who seemingly reject the Lord and persist in that rejection. Like I mean, a good another one. I mean, Judas is is a classic example of this. I mean, he's literally an apostle. I mean, he's, he's walking with Jesus. He's being discipled by Jesus and he betrays him. And the, the, the scandal is not really that, that Judas betrays him. I mean, that's scandalous, but we all betray him. I mean, we're, we're all 
scandalous in that regard. I mean, every apostle in, in their own way betrayed him other than, I guess, John in that moment. But Peter betrayed him. The other ones scattered. So it's not so much the fact that Judas betrayed him. It's the fact that he didn't repent, that he didn't uh, acknowledge like, oh, my gosh, I messed up and I but I should turn back to the Lord. And so the encouragement, the the challenge is the conviction is, wow, we need to be sober and recognize we're all capable through f- free will to to reject the Lord. And so that's the convicting part. But the hopeful part is, but I can immediately turn back to him. I can immediately turn back to them. And then as Catholics, the, the sacrament of reconciliation is just that, that unbelievable gift of being able to have a tangible experience, a tangible moment of grace, uh, a priest in the person of Christ who can help us understand, not just figuratively, but literally we are forgiven of our sins. Um, so it's, I think it's important to meditate upon our own fickleness and our own uh, weakness without becoming so scrupulous or so um, self-absorbed that we, we live in fear of, of sin. I mean, we should, we should live in fear of, of rejecting the Lord, like not, not fear. We should live in a conviction, I, I don't want to do that, but also simultaneously live in great hope of if and when I do the Lord will forgive if I turn back to him. So it's, it's that, it's that balancing act, right? It's that both end of being willing to acknowledge like the, the incredible potential we have for, um, running all the way into hell (laughs) and the, but the incredible potential of being saved and not losing conviction about either possibility. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to, obviously disposing ourselves to grace um, because it's obviously him that's doing the work first. Mm -hmm. What's a daily, a daily practice um, that would really help to avoid that kind of catastrophic failure after the Lord has, you know, put you in a place where he wants to bring you to success. Yeah. I mean the, the examine or that daily um, evaluation of, okay, where did I cooperate with God's grace today and where did I not? And wherever I cooperated, giving glory to him and thanking him for it and wherever I haven't, asking for forgiveness and and kind of having that instant repentance at the end of every day. Um, but I also think there's, there's a way at which uh, if we're living in the light and there are people in our lives who have access to what's going on in our hearts and our minds, that is a tremendous wall against complete corruption or uh, complete failure or a total falling off the wagon, if you will. Um, it's, 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 I've heard it says something like basically like the, a couple no BS friends where you just have a, a couple friends. It could be your spouse. It could be others who just, you don't sugarcoat things with, you don't um, shave off the edges of, you just bring things fully into the light. And again, this is where the sacrament of reconciliation is so powerful is because you're, you're pulling out of the dark parts of our heart, what is hidden, what can fester, what can develop and can grow. And you're just exposing it to the light of truth. You're exposing, exposing it to the light of mercy and it can, um, it kind of crushes it in that, in that, in that space, in that moment. Hmm. So having, having, uh, regular places where the, the light shines in the darkness is is vitally important to this and and i think like for men having um a couple other men that you can do that with and women same thing i think there's a there's a real value in the like men helping men and women helping women in this area and then yeah your relationship with your your spouse is another area that is is really significant in this um but i think i think just having that daily moment either at the end of the day or even in the middle of the day or throughout the day of just say like how am I doing, Lord? You know, where am I cooperating with the grace that you have? And where am I not? I had a, went to confession the other day and for my penance, this was such an awesome penance. The priest asked me to spend some time before the blessed sacrament, um, thinking about the moments where I sinned and asking the Lord to show me where his grace was there, but I didn't see it or I didn't cooperate with it. Like, Mm he wanted me to meditate on where God was and what he was doing in those moments where I sinned, where I rejected him. And it was like a really powerful exercise to like re-enter into the memory of like, okay, this is where I, I gave into anger and frustration and impatience. And, and then to ask Jesus, like, 
where were you in that? And where was the grace or how, why didn't I see the grace or did I recognize the grace and I rejected it? And what I realized in meditating on it was there was actually a moment when I was felt the anger coming where I actually thought I should, I shouldn't get angry right now. And what Jesus was showing me was like, that was a grace from him to respond and to avoid sin. And I consciously was like, nah, this feels better to get angry. Mm. And I chose the anger. And so that practice, what that helped me realize was like, because sometimes I think when we sin or we fall or there's, there's moments we got kind of go like, where were you, God? Why didn't you help me? And a lot, I mean, scripture tells us that the, the grace and the power is sufficient for every temptation to overcome. Um, so it's not, it's not our, it's not God's fault <laughs> in some ways. If we don't respond to his grace, it's, it's our fault because the grace is there. The power is there. Um, but a lot of times we don't recognize it or we're closed off to it or we consciously decide not to to cooperate with it. So that was just like a really inc- incredibly helpful exercise for me of like realization of, man, that um, I I had a moment there where I could have chosen the good and I didn't. And, and then the Lord and I had to talk about it and figure out how we're going to do differently the next time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good example. Cool. Those are those are some good questions. Thank you. This is this, we're probably coming up on our time, right? For a, this is a good episode. We don't want to overdo it. We don't want Chris to use all of his questions in one <laughs> in one time. But if you uh, like this episode and you liked how this went, and we're gonna pull out some of these snippets, snippets, Miguel. This would make for some good like reels and stuff. How's that sound? Insider baseball reels. Shorts. shorts. Yeah, we're more on shorts. Reels are so yesterday. We're all about shorts. Yeah, who does reels? Yeah, Instagram does reels. Meta. Anyway, point is, this has been a different type of episode of the Spirit for Leadership podcast. My thanks to Chris for good questions. Well done, Chris. My thanks to Miguel for sitting there and nodding appreciatively and filming and making sure everything worked well and for the editing. And uh, yeah, if you like this, this is, again, an example of what can happen if questions are submitted. So you can email me at pburek at renewalministries.net, pburek at renewalministries.net. Um, or just DM or reach out to us in some way, shape, or form, and we'll get your questions into the podcast. So this has been an episode of the Spiritful Leadership Podcast. We'll see you next time. God bless. Come, take my hand. We'll dance on graves, raise the dead, heal all the dead.